Hello, my name is Andre and I am an outings leader with Latino Outdoors in the Fresno region. Today, I'm gonna to be leading you guys on a hike through Nelder Grove, um, also known as, that, known as the Nelder Grove Historic Area, um, which is located in the Sierra National Forest. Today's uh, event is a collaboration between Latino Outdoors and Save the Redwoods League. Before we continue, I would like to acknowledge that we are in the traditional territories of the Awanishi people, also known as the Sierra, Southern Sierra Miwok people, and also the Nim people, also referred to as the Western Mono people. Aside from volunteering with Latino Outdoors, um, I am the San Joaquin Valley organizer with the organization called Cow Wild. Um, and Cow Wild's mission is primarily to conserve and restore uh, California's wildest remaining places um, and public lands like the Sierra National Forest that we'll be in today. Nalder Grove is especially interesting uh, because it is actually home to some of the giant sequoias that exist throughout the Sierra Nevada. Um, and giant sequoias, their scientific name are, is Sequoia dendron giganteum. Uh, another thing I want to briefly remind everybody of uh, before we continue is, you know, right now we're going through some unprecedented times and, you know, while we're all trying to recreate um, outdoors, you know, for whatever reason, um, you know, we have to do so responsibly. And one of those things that we can do to do so responsibly is to make sure you bring a face mask. So I have mine in hand um, and I'll use it if, if I need to, if I see other people on the trail or we'll definitely move out of the way if I can socially or physically distance myself enough. So um, here in, at Nelder Grove, uh, we're gonna be jumping on the Bullbug Trail. Um, and the Bullbug Trail, according to the sign, is about 0.68 miles. Um, and so a little bit more than half a mile. Um, but before we start going on the trail, there's some pretty cool history and signs back here that we can check out. So there's some pretty cool signs and history that's talked about here. Um, some of the history actually is part of this, is this cabin and another cabin that you can't quite see at the moment. Um, but there's two historical cabins here that were built in the late 1800s. But even before that, uh, the first evidence of Europeans uh, in Nelder Grove was in 1851 through notes in a diary from a soldier in the Mariposa Battalion, um, which was part of the state militia at that time. After that, uh, Galen Clark, who was famous for helping protect sequoias in Yosemite um, to the north of Nelder Grove, visited in 1858 and named this area uh, the Fresno Grove as it was part of Fresno County at that time. Um, and even uh, related to that, uh, the Grove um, was actually uh, renamed for John Nelder, who was a retired miner who came to the California in 1849. And the Grove itself was actually first surveyed in 1874, but the U.S. Forest Service did not acquire the land until 1928 um, from the Madera Flume and Trading Company. But the Grove itself did not start appearing into National Forest maps until 1937. Hopefully all of that was some pretty interesting history for you all, um, but let's keep exploring some of this area. So as we continue to explore the area, you can definitely start seeing sequoias. Um, you know, the one behind me is unfortunately not one that's standing any longer, but nonetheless, you can see how big of a tree it was. Um, you know, these large trees are very iconic of forest within the Sierra Nevada. Um, you know, these trees can be seen on the National Park Service uh, logo and the uniforms. They integrate the cones of the giant sequoia. Well, hopefully you guys learned quite a bit of history. Let's continue on our adventure. So, as you can tell, as we're encountering this part right here, this is a, a log that was obviously cut on both sides. And this is a pretty good indication that there's been active trail management. Sometimes in trails in this forest and in other areas, uh, there's trails that aren't designated and weren't uh, purposely planned. Um, so some people just accidentally take them or um, start doing uh, in indirect trails. Um, but this is definitely uh, signs of active forest management. So it's a good sign and know that we're on the right trail. So within the Nelder Grove, there are two main creeks that roll, uh, feed through the area. One of them being California Creek, which is what I'm standing by. Another one is Nelder Creek, which is not too far from this area. Um, both Nelder Creek and California Creek eventually meet up together, and then they both eventually feed down into the Fresno River. 
and the Fresno River eventually feeds down into the San Joaquin River, which is one of the largest rivers in California. Um, all of these creeks are part of the San Joaquin River watershed, and the watershed is essentially uh, a land area that has all the rain and snow melt that feed into it, a single body of water. An interesting piece of history that's related to both Nelder Creek and uh, California Creek is that originally California Creek used to be called Nelder Creek, and Nelder Creek used to be called Alder Creek, um, but now, again, this is called California Creek, and the other creek is called Nelder Creek. So, on the trail, came upon this small bush or shrub, and I'm pretty positive it's some sort of currant or gooseberry. Um, it has these little fruits and it has little uh, thorns or pricks to it. Um, and let me find it really fast. So yeah, pretty positive it's the Sierra gooseberry. As you can see, there is a large prickly fruit, as my guide says, and that's exactly what it is, a large prickly fruit. And so yeah, this is a Sierra gooseberry, scientific name being Ribes uh, roselii and it's also part of the same family as the currants. I came across this cool spider, um, but it's hanging out upside down, so I can't really tell the color pattern on, on it, so I think I'm just gonna I have to come back around and see if I can identify it later. I don't want to really want to bother the spider right now. So right now we're coming up on this trail junction. Um, and so there's two different trails. We can go check out the chimney trail or the bullbuck tree trail. Um, and I think I'm gonna head to the bullbuck tree trail because that's where I think there's a lot more sequoias for us to hopefully check out. So, as you can probably see from the sign, this is a bullbuck tree, which is to the left of me. Um, this is one of the famous giant sequoias for this area, and particularly the bullbuck is famous because it is one of the larger sequoia trees that's around, um, pretty comparable to some of the other larger trees that are in either Yosemite National Park or down in Sequoia National Park. Um, and as the sign reads, it's about 247 feet high and it's one of the largest trees by volume um, with 29,000 cubic feet and uh, the crown of the tree. So the area that the branches and the leaves spread out is uh, about 70 feet if it's reading correctly. Um, but yeah, as you can see, this is a pretty massive tree. So while the bullbug tree is about 247 feet high, um, giant sequoias in general can get up to be about 310 feet high. So to compare that, um, that's as taller than the Statue of Liberty, just by a little bit. And sequoias can get around 30 feet around the base. Um, and that would arguably take about six full-size people laying from head to toe to be able to wrap around the entire trunk. As you can see from this tree, um, you know, this base is a lot wider, so it'd probably take a lot more than six people. The term bullbuck is actually uh, a historical term, if you will. Um, that was the title of the people who used to uh, fell, uh, so drop the trees back in the logging days of the 1800s. Um, but particularly, it was the name of the boss of those people. Um, so like the head boss of the loggers. Um, so, you know, this being the boss tree, essentially, if you will, um, because it's one of the larger trees. So the bullbuck tree, along with all the other sequoias in this area, and all the other trees, all the other plants, and the different animals, all the wildlife, and even the soil, and the different processes or forces of nature, if you will, um, are all part of the same ecosystem and this habitat. Um, and this is part of the giant sequoia ecosystem. Um, so all of it kind of, you know, both if you, the physical that's alive and the physical that isn't alive um, necessarily are all part of the giant sequoia ecosystem, just to give a little bit more clarification. So giant sequoias are one of the longest lived tree species on this planet. Um, they can average about 3,000 years in age. Um, and they are actually the third longest lived species on the planet. 
uh, with the oldest specimen of sequoias being about 3,200 years old. And that tree was discovered down in the Giant Sequoia National Monument, so just south um, along the Sierra Nevada mountains. So like I said a little bit ago, um, you know, the giant sequoias uh, are part of the giant sequoia ecosystem, um, but not just the animals and the plants that are alive, but also, as I mentioned, fire as a process as part of the ecosystem. And in a second, you'll see, um, you know, some of the toll that fire as a process can take on this ecosystem. So as you can see from this sequoia stump, fire was definitely present in this area and in this giant sequoia ecosystem. Um, and fire was a very important part of the system, as I mentioned. Um, more so, especially because sequoia trees and their cones actually need fire for them to rejuvenate um, within the system. Um, you know, these sequoia cones are actually estimated to be about three times as big, or they can be up to three times as big, and can produce up to three times as many seeds within the cones as compared to their relatives, the redwoods. Um, but unfortunately for sequoias and many other forested areas and ecosystems, uh, fire management practices uh, excluded fire within these areas. Um, so it's been hard for you know, giant sequoias and other forest areas to completely recover as they used to be. Um, and that's especially known based on many scientific studies and traditional ecological knowledge um, from you know, ancestral uh, people uh, to, who called these areas homes. So while fire might not be a very uh, common thing on the landscape anymore, um, giant sequoias nonetheless had adapted a long time ago to be able to deal with fire um, being on the landscape and being a process that they have to deal with. Um, as you can see here, you know, they have a pretty thick bark, which is actually one of their adaptations to deal with fire. Um, their bark can sometimes be up to about two feet thick. Um, and more than that, as you saw on the giant bull buck a minute ago, uh, they have high canopies and or high uh, crowns um, and that was a mechanism to be able to defend against fires that were more lower on the ground um, and didn't you know quite reach all the way up to the top of the trees. Um, so again the thick bark and the high crowns are two uh, important defense um, adaptations that they had against fire. So as I've discussed um, giant sequoias have some pretty cool features that they've adapted to be able to deal with fire. And while talking about features, step down here. I'm pretty sure this is part of a sequoia uh, root system. Uh, giant sequoias can have their root systems extend about 100 feet in every direction. And obviously, you know, I'm not gonna be able to follow this route, but I'm pretty sure if we were able to, uh, we'd probably find it close to somewhere in that distance of 100 feet. Um, not quite a giant sequoia, but I still think pretty cool um, while I'm down here. Um, this is a sugar pine cone. And sugar pines, their scientific name is Pinus Lambertiana. Um, and as you can see, it's a pretty big cone, especially when you compare it to Sequoia cone, um, you know, pretty big difference. So actually, while I'm down here as well, might as well grab a quick sip of water. Make sure to stay hydrated when you're out here. All right, let's get going. So pretty much reached the end of the trail, which is actually not too far from the bullbug tree. Um, but you know, if we go ahead and go a little bit further, you'll see that there's the bullbug tree view. Um, and to the other side, there's a trail split off going in another direction. But now that I'm here and we stop and you know, take a look back, uh, it's pretty cool to see the view. Well gang, this is the end of the trail. Um, so I just wanted to take the time to thank you for letting me you know, lead you all on this hike. Um, I hope you all had fun and really enjoyed being able to you know, take this adventure with me. Quiero decir um, muchas gracias por dejarme uh, de ser guía en esta caminata con ustedes. Um, espero que se disfrutaron y que uh, tuvieron un buen tiempo. Muchas gracias y hasta luego.